I want you to turn today to Matthew chapter 24. And we're going to look and start at verse 4. I'll give you just a moment to get there. Matthew 24, verse 4. The Lord began to deal with my heart the other day about this, and I started getting my message ready, and then we had some things happen. The president, without notice to anyone, had the military attack with cruise missiles. Uh, Syria and take out their airport where they had been dispensing chemical weapons of mass destruction. Some were for it, some are against it. We're not here to discuss that. We're here to discuss the fact it leads to the signs of the time. And the Word of God says, and listen closely today and read along with me, And Jesus answered and said unto them, what was he answering? He was answering verse 3 there. They said, tell us when all these things be. And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? The end of the world. Well, we know the world's without end, but we do know also that it's going to be purified by fire. Amen. Fervent heat is going to ignite and the earth's going to be redone. Because the Bible also tells us there shall be a new heaven and new earth. You're even getting a new name. So some of you like me that might not like your name all your life, Mama strapped me with Milton. So I've been called Uncle Milty and all kinds of little names, you know, all my life. But thank God I'm getting a new name. You're getting a new name. And you are a new creature in Christ. The Bible says you'll even have a new song, and we'll have a new heaven and a new earth. I mean, likes things new. Amen. Amen. Praise God, I do too. So the word of God says, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. I thought this is kind of amazing because of the fact that this is the first thing he tells them. Because, see, the apostle Paul, through the inspiration of the Spirit, tells us in the latter times, that there shall be many people that will depart from the faith and give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Said people shall turn their ears from the truth and turn to fables. We're living in that time and that age when people want to have it their own way. And the Word of God says there is a way that seemeth right to man, but the end thereof is the way of destruction. So Jesus says, I want you to take heed that you not be deceived. I don't want you to be deceived because many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. What's he saying? We call ourselves Christians. Have you ever noticed a bunch of folks call themselves Christians but do not look like a Christian, do not act like a Christian, do not do much like a Christian at all, but yet they're Christian. Why? Because many say my family was Christian. Uh, you know, if you try witnessing somebody that's from the Catholic background, one of the first things out of their mouth is, I'm Catholic. Come on. Yeah. Try to witness to somebody that's Mormon, the first thing out of their mouth is, I'm Mormon. Or Jehovah Witness, I'm Jehovah Witness. Well, that's not the question. The question is, are you a born-again Christian? Yeah. See, Jesus told Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of God. I want you to know you've got to be born again. And the Bible says once we're born again, all things pass away, and behold, all things become new. Are you a new creature in Christ? That's what God's Word says. We are a new creature in Christ. Well, I got saved, Pastor Wall, and I ain't changed one bit. You didn't get saved. Boy, it got quiet. Come on, get behind me. I said, hallelujah, I want to see you burn today. I asked how many of you was on fire, and everybody raised their hand, I'm on fire. Well, I want to see you burn. I want to see you help me preach this message. If you're truly saved uh, and if you're truly committed to God, you want to change your ways. You don't want to keep fulfilling the lusts and desires of the flesh. Uh, you want to walk in the Spirit. 
Amen. I want to walk in the Spirit. Uh, see, in the spirit realm is where God's going to be able to communicate with you. Uh, in the mental realm or the sense realm uh, is where the enemy communicates with you. That's why the Bible said, casting down every wicked imagination and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. The word of the living God. That's where we need to be. And Jesus is telling, many shall come in my name. They're saying they're Christian. We got a lot of people that's coming and saying they're even Christ. One man's got people tattooing 666 on their foreheads and their hands and talking about he's Christ. No, he's not Christ. Uh, he's exactly what the Word of God is talking about. He is a false Christ, uh, a false person that's identifying themselves with Christianity but knows nothing about Christianity. And we shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Has anybody lately heard of wars and rumors of wars? <laughs> you can't turn on television unless somebody's talking about war and rumor of wars. According to the statistics I got, they estimate there are three times higher than those of previous report. Data from the new study also suggests that 378,000 people worldwide die in a violent death of war or violence. That's a lot of people, isn't it? Then he goes on to say, Shall hear wars and rumors of wars, but it's not the end. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. Well, I looked up famines. Hunger and the world poverty report. 21,000 every day die from hunger. 21,000. That's 7,665,000 people a year. Then it says pestilence. Pestilence just really means diseases. The figure from the World Health Organization says that over 17 million die of infectious disease each year. Then it talks about earthquakes. An average of 10,000 people die each year from earthquakes. Those are just statistics. And we look at the Word of God, and if you look at the frequencies of earthquakes that we have now, they're greater than ever before in recorded history. We're having them more. We're having them in different places. And what did Jesus say? They shall happen in divers places, which simply means in different places. We are seeing the end of the age. And these are the beginning. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, beginning. This is not the end all of sorrow. This is the beginning of sorrows. We had those people just killed for nothing more than just believing in Christ. We sit here today and we're privileged to come to the church we want to come to. We're privileged to be in the house of God in safety, but many are not. Many are huddled in places where we wouldn't even want to go. Many only have a one-page part of the Bible that they cherish and share with other believers. We're living in an age and a time when the enemy is coming against the church full force. I believe he's loosed every hell from hound, uh, every hound from hell, amen, to try to captivate the minds of the people. And I believe he's doing a pretty good job in some areas. Can somebody say amen? And all these things are the beginning of sorrow. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And shall be, you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. That's happening right now. We see them kneeling Christians all the time and beheading them. This is happening right now. And then shall many be offended. See, the word of God will bring offense to many. People get offended sometimes by me preaching. They get offended sometimes by me telling them the truth. The Word of God will bring offense. See, a lot of people think they know it all and really don't know hardly anything at all. Can somebody say amen? 
See, some of you sit here today and you say, well, I've been in church 30 years. What have you done in 30 years? Have you ever saved one soul? No, you haven't, but have you ever even talked to a soul about getting saved? Hello? Have you done anything to further the kingdom of God in your life and your family? What is your condition spiritually? Do you really understand that you weren't called to come to church and just sit on a seat? You were called to preach the gospel to every creature. You were called to go out and lay hands on sick folks uh, and watch them recover. You were called, amen, to cast out devils. Uh, we need to do that in our age and time. You can't tell me uh, that 20 years ago I was casting demons out, but nobody's got demons today. Hello? We plague our minds with these movies, The Walking Dead, and all kinds of old crazy stuff uh, we fill our hearts and our minds with, uh, amen, to captivate our souls. Uh, but let me tell you something. You need to plant the word uh, of the living God in your heart. Uh, hallelujah, the word of God says uh, that the man of God said, I've written it on the tables of my heart uh, that I might not sin uh, against my God. Uh, I want to tell you, blessed are the benefits uh, of those who know the living word of the living God. Be not deceived, folks. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth unto the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. I believe that's Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. God wants us to realize there's wages for sinful action. Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There's wages. There's a payday. Some of you every week wait to get your paycheck. Well, we're going to wait and stand before God, and we're going to get paid. Amen. Those who have Jesus Christ in their life, that sin debt has been paid. Amen. Amen. You owed a debt you could not pay. Hallelujah. You owed it. He paid a debt he did not owe. He paid your debt, my debt, all of our debts because he loved us. The word of God said, for God so loved the world, everybody in the world, not just a few in the world, but all the world. He said, if any come to me, I would in no wise cast them out. Amen. God is no respect of person. Doesn't matter what your past is like. Uh, doesn't matter how dark it is. Uh, doesn't matter what you've done in the past. Uh, all things pass away and all things become new. Uh, and God makes you a new creation in Christ Jesus. Uh, his son can somebody say glory to God. See, preaching the gospel does bring offense. Folks get mad, go to another church. Huh? Get mad, don't come to church just because you called them out. See, a lot of people don't want to be accountable to nobody. Hello? I don't want no accountability, but see, the Bible tells us to be accountable one to the other. See, the Bible tells us to check one another. I know you don't want to hear that, but that's the word of God. See, the Bible says if you see a brother or sister overtaken in a fault, restore such a one in meekness and love because you can find yourself in the same situation. No, you don't kick them while they're down. You help them up. But you do not agree with their sin. Amen. We preach a lot about sin. Sin is something that's been paid for if you accept the payment. That's Jesus Christ. We can talk about uh, adultery, fornication, lying, cheating. Uh, we can talk about all that stuff, homosexuality. We can talk about everything. Uh, I invite everybody to the church. Uh, I say everybody's invited, but I don't change my message for nobody. Amen. See, my message is the cross of Christ. Amen. He not only died, but was resurrected. We will celebrate that resurrection next Sunday. Because he was raised from the dead, that same spirit uh, that raised Jesus Christ from the dead uh, shall quicken your mortal bodies uh, and raise you uh, in the same way. Can somebody say uh, hallelujah? 
Woo! With the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And the Bible says, comfort ye one another with these words. Amen. That's a comforting word. But we can see the signs of the times. We haven't been delivered up to be killed yet. But they have sure tried to shut us up. In one city in Texas, they tried to get the pastors to get their sermons approved before they preached them. You know your pastor's going to jail. But he ain't going to hell. I get my message approved unto God. See, the Bible says you ought to be a workman. Amen. That rightly divides the word of God. And you have to be approved unto God, not unto man, but unto God. Hallelujah. Study to show thyself approved unto God. I'm not looking for man's approval. I'm preaching the word of God, which is spirit and life. And for those who will hear it and endure it, uh, amen, and apply it to their life, uh, Jesus will come in. Uh, hallelujah. He's knocking on your heart's door. He wants you to open it up. He said, me and my father will come in. Uh, we'll have fellowship with you. Uh, he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. If you invite me in, uh, hallelujah, I'll clean you up. Uh, glory to God. Uh, you'll begin to not have that appetite of flesh anymore, but you will get hungry and thirsty for the righteousness of God. You will want the living water, the living word of the God, amen, that sits in heaven and looks down upon earth, searching for a man and woman that will make up the hedge, hallelujah, and will carry the word of the living God. Mm -mm -mm. Many shall be offended. If you were a pastor, you'd hear all the stories, all the excuses, and people just love it. See, the Bible says that a lot of people just love to have it that way because that is their way. And that way doesn't lead you to God. That way leads you to destruction. See, a man sometimes wants to do what is right in his own eyes. Yeah, but see, if your eyes hasn't been focused on Christ, the author and the finisher of your faith, see, your eyes are the windows of your soul. If your eyes haven't been sanctified, you might be looking at the world, and your appetite might be that of the world, and that's not God. God wants you to focus on Christ, amen, the captain of your salvation, the one that's given you eternal life, the one that gives you the security of knowing you're born again, amen. You're no longer are headed to a devil's hell but you're going to heaven you got a new name in glory that name is written in the Lamb's book of life glory to God Amen. is your name there see the Bible says sister Rita that on that day many will come and say check that book out I'm sure my name is in there wow I went to Miracle Temple one time I know it's in there keep checking Lord I mean, uh, hey, I, <laughs> come on, Lord, check it out, because I gave a dollar. You remember that. I was there. It was Easter, and I don't understand why all those people came on Easter when they knew I was only coming once a year. They should have saved me a seat. Some of them should have stayed at the house. Huh? And Jesus says, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Now, Jesus does not lie. So if he said, I never knew you, he never knew you. But yet, Brother Darrell, they said we were there. I mean, we seen the miracles. We seen devils cast out. I mean, we were there. We seen the power of God. We seen the man anointed, amen, to work the miraculous. We were there, and Jesus said, you might have been there, but you wasn't part of it. See, what they said is, didn't we? But see, it's not about we. It's about thee. Amen. You, me, individually. What have we done? 
to separate ourselves from the world. See, the Bible says, Come out from the world and be separate, saith the Lord, and I will be your father, and you shall be my children. Does anybody know what I'm preaching today? Hmm? And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Now, some of you that are as old as I am, you remember, amen, the old family movies they had when they showed a bedroom scene. You've seen two uh, twin-sized beds, and the man was in one bed, and the woman was in another. And then Sister Nancy, they progressed a little bit, and then they showed a bedroom scene, but they had to have one foot off the bed on the ground. That kept them from getting real close. Huh? Now they, they, they can just do anything. We won't even go into it. They can do absolutely anything. And I'm not talking about just on some programs. Uh, I'm talking about just about every program. Uh, you can't watch nothing, amen, unless you're seeing two men kissing, two women kissing, or somebody laying in bed having sex, uh, all that stuff. Somebody said, why are you talking about that? Because iniquity doth abound, uh, the love of many shall wax cold. Uh, people become cold in the Lord. Uh, and then all of a sudden the devil sends them deception uh, and says you can believe this with the Bible says uh, if you believe the lie you shall be damned uh, for believing it and you will believe it when you stop loving the truth because the truth is the only thing that's going to make you free Amen. thank God for being free but he that shall endure until the end the same shall be saved Endure to the end, Sister Vicky. Endure to the end. My God, some can't endure from Sunday to Sunday. Endure to the end. Brother Charles, this is a race of endurance. We're running a race today. We're part of the body of Christ if we saved. And every one of us are vitally important. I don't care if you're just a big toe. You're important. Cut yours off and find out how important it is. Amen. When you begin to lose functioning in one part of your body, you realize how important that part is. Amen. And I'll tell you something. It's good to have all your parts functioning. Amen. And all of us are fittingly joined together, the Word of God says, into a body of Christ or a body of believers. And Jesus said, I put everything under my feet. If you look down, amen, your feet are on the bottom. He put all the powers, all the principalities, all the rulers of darkness, all the spiritual wickedness, and high places, all that stuff is under the church. It's not over the church. It doesn't lord over you. It's under the church. Amen. It's to be walked on. It's not to be talked about and loved. It's to be walked on, trampled on, so the devil cannot trample on you. If you give him place, he'll run all over your territory that you've claimed out for God. The end's coming, and it's coming soon. We hear Damascus spoken about in the news. Most of you hear Damascus, and you just think, where is that? Think nothing about it. But Damascus is going to be leveled. I mean, like it was never there. What would cause that? Israel lobbing one nuke. To Damascus just wipe them totally out all the world is being gathered together against one small little country called Israel isn't that amazing see if you listen to the news and you study prophecy you realize that you're living in the greatest time ever you're living in a time when at any moment the rapture could take place. Sister Mary, there's no more prophecy that has to be fulfilled. We could be sitting here this morning, Sister Jeanette, and all of a sudden hear that trumpet sound and see the dead raised. 
Amen. Some of you would be raising up. You'll get it on your way home. I said we want to see you on fire. Fire burns. And I want to see you light. Amen. See that little light in you. Don't put it out. Don't hide it under a bushel. Don't shove it under a bed. Set it on a hill or a lampstand so that everyone can see it. Aren't you just so sad about all these secret service Christians, these closet Christians huh? that nobody would ever know is a Christian? I believe it's time to get on the rooftop and sound it aloud. I'm saved and I know it. Amen. And I want to tell the world what I have, you can have. You can be saved. You can be committed. You can be changed. God loves you. God sent Jesus for you. He redeemed you back to himself because he breathed in the nostrils of man and they became a living soul. You're part of God. And God doesn't want you going to a devil's hell. Now, some of you might listen to some of these preachers and you might hear, we're all the family of God. Well, we're not all the family of God. We are all creation of God. But the family of God is the children of God. And Jesus told some of them who thought they were the children of God, proclaiming, I'm the child of Abraham. My forefathers and my descendants all go back to Abraham. We're the children of God. And Jesus said, you're the children of your father, the devil. That was deception. That's what we're talking about today. Many shall be deceived. Many shall be deceived. And because sin doth abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Because people will look for a quick way out of doing what they know God has called them to do. Sister Mary, they'll look at another religion that might feel a little better. They'll try to get another preacher that won't preach like me. He'll preach to you that everything's okay. Put your money in the offering. Go on to lunch. Have a good evening. A two-minute sermonette. Amen. And they just go on. You know, it's not that way here. I'm concerned about your soul. And why am I concerned about your soul? Because the Bible says, if I fail to warn you, the blood is on my hands. I'm a watchman on the wall. The watchman on the wall, he was there on the wall because he could see in further than anybody on the ground. Sometimes I see further in your life than you want me to. Sometimes I make you aware of it. Sometimes God makes you aware of it. But God tries to make all of us aware of things, doesn't he? But sometimes in our stubbornness and our bullheadedness, we just say, I'm not going to listen. Boy, you can do that. But remember, one day you'll wish you had listened. Amen? We had a young man that, when I was an officer, he'd get in trouble and his mom would come over there. And she's like a lot of the moms I know. Every time she came, Sister Wilson, that's not my son. My son didn't do that. We'd arrest him again. My son didn't do that. You just picking on my boy. My son didn't do that. And one time the lieutenant got a little tired of hearing him. He said, ma'am, the only thing that's going to change in this boy's life is the length of time he spends in prison because he did do it. And you saying he didn't do it and did do it, that's not right. Because the Bible says, confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. But the consequences of sin is still there. It's death. One out of one of us is going to die. That's statistics. But thank God, the Christian dies once because he was born twice. But the sinner dies twice because they were only born once. Can somebody say amen? Will you stand to your feet this morning?